This episode of Wise Advice is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. Go to healthiq.com forward slash DAG to support the show and see if you qualify. Fat DAG is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. That's right. Welcome to episode 170 of Wise Advice. And, and I always open the show letting you know that I believe in you. And, and I, I always want to kind of reemphasize that a little bit because, you know, I think as we go through this process, you're going to hear a couple emails uh, or later on that talk about people who, who maybe didn't believe in themselves in the journey. And so that's why we're here is that I know who I am. I know what I did to get here. I know the inspiration that I used to get here. And I didn't believe in myself until I to kind of all put it all together and then when I finally got to the point where I, I met my goal, I figured out that it was, it was other people believing that I could do it that helped motivate me. So knowing all that, knowing that it's possible is why I believe that you can do this. I believe in you and I will walk with you up until the point, I'm never going to stop walking with you, but I will walk with you up until the point where you believe in yourself and that point, you'll reach back and you'll find other people that'll walk with you because you're walking with them. So continue to believe in yourself. If you're not there yet, continue to stay plugged in because we will absolutely get there. For those of you who don't know, uh, Twitter automatically sends out the, if we're going to go live, Twitter, uh, Twitter lets you know that we're going to go live. So go to uh, twitter.com forward slash wise advice. Follow that account. It auto tweets out every time we go live, so you'll never miss an episode when we're when we do live. You can always go to fatdag.com, click on the event tab. That'll let you know when the next show is coming up as well. The best two places to find out when we're live: fatdag.com and Wise Advice on Twitter, uh, and then of course stay plugged in everywhere else. But I want to open the show with the. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion lately about the plan and, and, and folks who are really doing well and folks who, who aren't doing so well. And, and I want to kind of just frame it a little differently. I put it on Facebook and I put it on Connect. The posts are still there. You can go read them. But I'm essentially going to let you know that, you know, weight loss plans, they're really just like the airline industry, right? They, they're all going to get you to wherever it is that you want to go eventually. But you got to find one that is flying direct. Get there, buckle in, and just hope they don't lose your luggage. Just remember that no matter how much you love Delta, there's always going to be someone who will arrive at the exact same airport that you're flying to, but they flew American, and they loved it. They might even tell you, you know, the last time that they flew Delta, they hated it. They'll, they'll tell you, oh, that was the worst airline trip ever. I'll never fly Delta again. And you're standing there thinking, well, you know, I just had a great flight and, and, and I boarded the plane. They didn't lose my luggage. My luggage came out first. And you're actually really happy, happy with your experience on Delta. But, but for them, it was the absolute worst thing ever. And of course, if, if you asked, you know, the entire nation what they thought of the airline industry, many people would say it's, it's a disaster and it's such a mess. And, and, but if you look at it every single day, there are hundreds of thousands of people waiting in line to get on an airplane. They're in that million mile long security line waiting to board something that they believe is a disaster. You know, certainly when I get to an airport, the first thing I do is that, you know, I smile and I'm just happy that I, I'm going someplace new for something to do something fun. And I smile at the security guards. You know, I go through TSA and I hand them my bag and, and I get to my gate. I board the plane, I get in the seat and I just fly happily ever after. I, I put my headphones on, I sit there quietly. 
I'm really focused on me at that point and, and where I'm headed and what I'm doing. And I just, I don't really pay any attention to all the other airplanes in the sky. It doesn't matter to me. It's the pilot's responsibility to figure out that we're not going to hit another airplane. Air traffic control is responsible for that. My job is to sit on the plane with the folks who are in that plane with me and just we're all going to the same destination and just work with them, encourage them. If I needed to open the emergency exit door, I would do that for the fellow passengers on my plane. You know, this time that I flew, I flew American. You know, next week it might be Delta, it might be United, it might even be Southwest. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me because I'm so focused on the destination, I don't really care how I get there. You know, and if you think about that for a second, so I just got back from a trip in Orlando and, you know, we got to the convention center. I was there all week in the convention and, and of the hundreds of people I saw, you know, one thing that never came up, no, no one asked me what airline I flew. It didn't matter at that point. We were all in the same convention center. We were all settled in. They didn't say, how did you get here? We didn't have little groups of, well, if you flew American, this is your convention. If you flew Delta, this is your convention. If you flew, flew United, uh, you're in room four. It didn't work that way because once we got to where we were going, no one cared how we got there. Didn't matter if we drove, didn't matter if we flew, didn't matter if we walked in, took a cab. The way we arro arrived to our destination was irrelevant. We got there. We were all happy. We were, we were just celebrating together being there. And I've flown many times in my life. If you've heard the story before, I, I did about 750,000 miles in three years. So I have some, some airline miles under my belt. And I can tell you there's a lot of things that happened uh, that most of you have probably never experienced on an airplane, right? But I, I've had gate changes more often than you can count. I get there, ready to go, and all of a sudden, hey, we're going to go to a new gate. You know what I did? I went to the new gate. I didn't stand at gate four yelling, barking, screaming, saying, I, I only want to board through gate four. If the plane was leaving out of gate seven, I went to gate seven and I got on the airplane. I've missed my flight. I've gotten to the airport and the flight took off. And I, you know, I, I know what I did? I went to the gate and said, hey, I'm still trying to get to wherever I'm going. Can, is there another flight? And sure, they booked me on the next flight. I, I've had my flights delayed and know what I did? I sat there waiting for the flight to take off. The airlines have lost my baggage. And I, I didn't say, well, then forget it. Turn around and send me home. I didn't get to my destination without my bag and say, forget it, take me back home. You know, I just, I just figured it out. I've taxied out to the end of the runway. We've turned around and went right back to the gate, went back inside the terminal more often than you can probably know. And I went into a whole different gate, got on a whole different airplane and continued my flight. This last flight, if you saw the post I put on Connect, was the, was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. We're flying. It's, I'm going from Indiana, uh, Indianapolis up to Chicago, Chicago down to uh, Orlando. So we take off uh, out of Indianapolis very, or very early, 6 o'clock departure. We're flying up to Chicago. It's pitch black out. Half the plane is asleep. The lights are all out. As, out of nowhere, the loudest boom I've ever heard in my life. Just absolutely plane-shaking boom. And at the exact same time, the whole left side of the airplane lit up in a, in a light of fire. And it was, it was absolutely crazy. And so it was about as quick as, you know, just like a flash of light, uh, looked like a big giant fireball. My first reaction is we lost an engine. Now, I know a little bit about the airline industry, and I know that, you know, a plane's perfectly capable of flying on one engine. But I got to tell you, I actually kind of thought we lost a wing, to be brutally honest. And for about four or five seconds, maybe in a couple of minutes, we flew um, very, very erratic. You know, banking to the left, banking to the right, to the left, to the right. It was absolutely beyond terrifying. I pulled out my phone. I sent a text message to my wife, and, and I truly, uh, sincerely sent her the message that I thought would be the last message she would ever receive. I said, you know, I love you, and uh, sent it to my wife, and sent it to my daughter, and you know, it kind of, it kind of gets me choked up a little because I truly thought that was it. And shortly thereafter, the plane kind of we regain, um, you know, some stability, and all of a sudden we start flying smooth. And at that point, I realized that we have some time. So then I start texting the details of what happened because I'm convinced that we're not going to make it. I'm convinced that uh, my text messages to her will be absolutely used as part of the aircraft investigation. And that's what I did. 
Because I'm like, you know, someone needs to know what happened. And, and the only way they're going to know is if someone who was there can relay it. So I'm frantically texting out everything I can think of to give her the details of this. And, um, and, and so luckily, right? So the plane comes to stability for another 30 minutes or so. We fly. A pilot says nothing. We land in Orlando, uh, it's our Chicago. We land in Chicago. Instead of saying, welcome to Chicago, you know what the pilot says? He says, whew, well, we made it. Those are the first words he, he uttered. And so, so we taxied into the gate. Everything's fine. We get off the airplane, realize that we all made it. And you know what I did? I walked to the next gate. I got on the next plane, and I flew to Orlando. And so if you think about this journey, you know, the airline industry is a lot like the weight loss industry. It doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter which vehicle you use. The key is, is you can't give up on your journey. You have to stay focused. You have to stay mindful. You've got to follow whatever plan you have and get it done. Now, if the plan changes on you, which we know it's done right now, you know, if that works for you, you've got to continue to work for it. If you're struggling on it, you have to reassess, maybe try and see if there's something you can adjust in your lifestyle or do it. But if you're doing everything right, then maybe it's time for another airline. You know, maybe it's time for you to reassess, but, but that's a question that only you can answer. But, but the thing you need to know more than anything is that there are multiple ways to find success. What you're trying to do is get healthy. What you're trying to do is get fit. What you're trying to do is, is get in a place in your head where you're happy with yourself. If you're happy with yourself and you're eating properly, your body will shed the weight it doesn't need. And so you just got to stay focused. And, and all this talk we have, you know, Facebook, Connect, and Instagram, you know, they're like an airport terminal. You know, generally speaking, when you're in that terminal, everybody in that terminal is kind of flying the same airline, right? That's kind of how they arrange it. But not always, right? There are connecting flights left and right. So occasionally in your terminal, there are going to be people who are flying a completely different airline, we don't single them out. We don't point them out. We don't tell them they're on the wrong airline. We don't yell at them, make fun of them for, for not flying the same airline we're flying. In fact, we probably actually give them directions if they ask how to get to their terminal, and we help them out. It's the thing I want you to remember most of all in this journey is that how you do this doesn't matter. I prefer Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is the plan that I choose. It's the plan that I recommend. But I've seen success on every single plan that's out there. And you can have that success. And, and the common denominator is why. Why are you doing this? Why are you waking up every morning on fire? Why do you want to get this done? If you stay focused there and you find the tribe of people who are in that same mindset, who want to get it done the same way you do, then you absolutely can have the success. You know, and if for, if for some reason you're trying to figure out what your why is, that's okay. You don't need to have your solid why on day one. What you have to do is ask yourself, why did you join? Why today did you walk into a meeting room? Why today did you sign up? It will become clearer. At some point, you'll start recognizing things in your journey that, that maybe you didn't realize before, and that why will slowly come to you if you never, ever give up. I want to share that with you because I think so often we get wrapped up on, on everybody having to do the same thing, and, and we're so far from that as a society, you, we can do our own things and we can find success so many ways. But what it takes is us encouraging each other to continue doing whatever it is that we do to get it done. The first email comes in from Stella, and Stella writes it. She says, I found you on Connect, and I'm so grateful for whoever suggested that I listen to your podcast. It's been a game changer for me. I, like many others, have had ups and downs of 60 to 80 pounds. I'm a lifetimer, nowhere near goal right now. But I know I will get there this time, and I'll stay there. I'm down 27 pounds so far, 50-something more to go. I'll know when I get there. I can't wait to get on the scale and say, I don't want to lose any more weight. My attitude is different this time. I feel it. 
I'm a doctor, and my patients have known me through heavy and the thin times. At my heaviest, or even chubby, I'm embarrassed to talk and counsel them on their obesity. Here I am talking to them about a diet, really? But wait, what I try and do is explain that they are not alone and that I feel exactly what they're going through. I talk about my experience, my past and the present, and it it at least makes sense to them to know that I get it. But I want to show them that it can be done. I want to be a good example to them, not like the cardiac, cardiac surgeon taking smoke breaks outside. No matter what our jobs are, we all have some issues uh, that are the same, I guess. I talk about you to my patients, and I suggest the podcast a lot. My patients are starting to recognize my weight loss, and it feels great. I'm laser-focused, and I can't wait to get back to goal. I'm very in tune to my triggers, and I avoid them. I may need to avoid them for life, but I'm okay with that. I would rather have goal than cookies and junk. As you say, I don't want my addictions on life support. I took your advice, and I have many wise and non-scale victory moments all typed into my notebook in my phone. I read, and I add to it almost daily. I got my cousin and three three co-workers to join Weight Watchers as well. Basically, I cannot thank you enough for your support and for your service to our amazing country. You really have a gift for what you do, and I'm so proud to be a small supporter and a patron. Uh, Stella, also known as Holly3080 on Connect. Well, let's start with the obvious. C- congratulations on being a lifetime member. You got to take a moment to pause and say, I'm a lifetime Weight Watcher member. Regardless of where you are in your current journey, you at one point figured it out. You worked the plan. You got to goal. You got to lifetime. And we recognize you in that way. Congratulations. Think of that for a second. That in in itself is incredibly difficult, but you did it. So now what's cool is now as you recontinue on this journey, you start somewhere that that not too many people get to start with is you actually have proof of what you're trying to do. Not only do you have uh, physical, physical proof, you have proof that you were able to do it. You don't need to draw on inspiration from somebody else. You can draw on inspiration from your past. Because when you reached lifetime before, it was difficult, but you were able to get it done. Now you're down 27 pounds, which is incredible, 50 or something to go. You will absolutely know when you get there. You will. You'll step on the scale and you say, I don't want to lose any more weight. We call that goal. Your attitude is already different. That right there is incredible. You're clearly in the right mindset, and that is what it takes to win. I really loved how you opened up in the middle of your email where, where you said that you know, as a doctor, uh, your patients have known you through heavy and through thin times, and, and you, you are embarrassed to talk or counsel them on obesity. Man, I, I, I totally understand that. And, you know, here again, you know, kind of relating it back to me is, is 263 pounds as a military recruiter, I would look at a kid who was 190 pounds. I'd tell him he's overweight and he couldn't join. I understand exactly what you're saying when you, as a doctor, ask, tell your patients that they have to start working on losing weight and you're not happy where you are. But, but what I absolutely loved how you reframed it is that you now can relate to them in a way that very few people can relate to them. You know, if you were, if you were an amazing doc who was, who was fit and trim and never, ever struggled weight with weight loss, it would be a little bit difficult for you to convince someone else that the journey is doable and worth it. You have that amazing testimony that you now have a gift to be able to share it with people who need it so often. Man, as a doctor, you see so many people that you can help with your journey. Clearly, that's motivating. And, and the fact that you have a personal story to tell, you know, I, I think it's incredible. And I hope as, as you, when you get to your goal weight or wherever you are, you, you put your picture up so they can see that the journey is possible. You know, continue to be there for them. Continue to work this journey and prove to them that they can do it. 
It's an amazing gift you can give to them, and, and I'm proud of you for wanting to share it. I appreciate very much you sharing that with with a podcast with them. That's pretty cool as well. Thank you for that. So we joked about this a few months ago. I said, this is podcast is doctor recommended. So I, I really appreciate that, you know, kind of in a joking sort of way, but but it's absolutely cool and it, it truly honored uh, that you would think of it in such a way. So thank you for that. Continue to stay t- tuned into your triggers. That I think that is key. I think for a lot of us, you know, not understanding what our triggers are is where the danger lies. Now, if you're very in tune to them, I and you and I agree that, you know, I would rather have goal and stay at goal than have cookies and junk food for the rest of my life. I feel at this point in my journey, I have complete control over my food choices. Are they always perfect? No, but they're always mindful. And so I don't keep my sugar addictions on life support. I have the ability to to manage what I eat. I, I, I have completely transformed my life. I've gotten out of that mindset where I just completely, you know, un, unknowingly just continue and habitually continue to, to eat food. I've broken the addiction to the food. That is what we have to work on. So much of this journey is addictive. And so I we beat that. And, and you, you know, continue to write down your non-scale victories, continue to write down your why in your phone. Referring to it often is what I call focus. Every morning that you open your phone and you read a non-scale victory and you write down a why and you reread a why, you start the day off knowing what the goal is. You start every morning knowing what the goal is. And as you work through the day, you can always reference back to them. Would I rather have this or would I rather have you know, my goal? And because you start the day focused, it's easier to stay focused throughout the course of the day. Continue to keep up the amazing work. It's truly an honor to get your email and to read it. Uh, 27 pounds down, 50 to go. You're going to get there. You're going to get back there. I can feel it. Your attitude is completely different. Your patients are counting on you. The world's counting on you. And I'm walking with you every step of the way. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health-conscious people like runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. Like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. Health IQ is the fastest-growing life insurance company with over $5 billion in coverage. You may be wondering, what if I have a pre-existing condition? Can I still get special rates? You sure can. A previous illness like sleep apnea, heart disease, or diabetes doesn't define you. Managing and overcoming chronic diseases or illnesses is really hard work. It's something they celebrate and absolutely can still get you special rates. I know what you're asking, but Fat Dag, are Health IQ's special rates just great marketing? Nope, it's way better. 56% of their clients get their exclusive special rates. They're the only company that has invested in gathering science and data to prove that health-conscious people live longer, so Health IQ is the only place you can find the special rates you deserve. I checked it out myself. The quote came in at a lower rate than my current policy. I've gone through the process of getting screened. I have my blood drawn. I talked to Ryan at Health IQ, and he was able to answer all of my questions. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com forward slash DAG. Life insurance companies calculate your policy rates based on your nearest age, not your actual age, and rates increase as you get older. So lock in the best rate possible by getting a free quote today. Visit healthiq.com forward slash DAG. Next up, very cool email from Diane out of Naperville. She says, hi, Mike. It's Diane from Naperville. I just had to celebrate with you that I am at goal. Yes, yes, goal. I lost 2.6 pounds at this morning's weigh-in, and I made goal. I lost 7.2 pounds this month. It's the biggest weight loss month that I can ever remember. My total weight loss is 149.2 pounds. I've now lost more than I weigh. What a concept. It's been three and a half years in the making. Even though back then I never dreamed I would get to the Weight Watcher goal weight, and now I'm five pounds below that. 
I knew I had to lose at least 100 pounds, but, but here I am almost 50 pounds more. I think it all changed somewhere in the middle of 2017 when I started to believe in myself and I felt that I was worth it. I had a mindset change. I just knew that I was going to find a way to get to goal. Sure, I had my ups and downs along the way, but it became a learning experience for me. I also was able to get out of my comfort zone a little more and do something I never thought I could do. Now, on to maintenance and lifetime. Even though I am so excited, at the same time, I am nervous and a little scared. It's uncharted waters, I guess. I'm also going for the 150-pound charm since I'm 0.8 pounds away. My leader asked me to share one piece of advice for all of our new members in our meeting. I told them to never give up on yourself. We can all do this. Just don't quit. Thank you for your service and for all that you do. Most of all, thank you for being my wingman, Diane. Diane, 149.2 pounds. Incredible. You, you've lost more weight than you currently weigh. What I, what I believe to be the most powerful thing in that is what you said is it took you three and a half years in the making. That's incredible perseverance. Way to go by getting it done. That's what not quitting gets you. Folks, you want to see what not quitting gets you? That's what Diane did is three and a half years she did this, which means she can do it for the rest of her life. 149.2 pounds. Absolutely incredible. But clearly, as you saw in the email, is that somewhere in the middle, she started to believe in herself and she felt that she was worth it. Diane, I'm so glad that you had that mindset, mindset change. And so what, what's very cool about that is, is somewhere in the middle where you finally understood that you are worth it. You absolutely are worth it. You know, I think for so many of us for so long, when we start the journey, we don't feel that at all. And so we have to kind of fake it until we make it. We kind of have to just follow the plan, trust the plan, read the map, and just do whatever the map says. And at some point in the middle of the journey, when you start really completely changing your life, it feels incredible. And then at that point, you do have to get out of your comfort zone. Let me tell you something a little bit about comfort zones. Your comfort zone is what puts you in this scenario in the first place. If you want to be in your comfort zone, you're, for me, my comfort zone is to go back to being 263 pounds. And that's only comfort in a sense where I know, you know, a day to day, I don't have to think. I wasn't doing anything. I was just, just mindlessly going about life. Sure, it's uncomfortable to look everything up. And sure, it's uncomfortable to, to pack a lunch, you know, to go into a golf event. There's so many things that, that your, your current routine, you have to break that and completely change your life. You've heard me say it more than once. If you want to change your life, you have to completely change your life. And what I mean by that is whatever is comfortable, you have to get rid of because comfortable is what puts you in this place in the first place. You have to break that comfort zone. You have to do things that you have never done in order to get results that you've never gotten. I can just imagine Diane walking into the meeting for the very first time, and, and as a Weight Watcher leader, I'm trying to very, be very mindful of this, is, is when someone asks what their goal weight is, you know, and, and we tell them you have to be you know, 140 pounds, you know, and they just, they just go, oh, it's too overwhelming. And, and 100% of the time, I agree. And that's not what you need to do. You need to come in and say, I'm here to follow the plan, whatever the plan is. I'm here to get it done. Three and a half years later, Diane just proved it's possible. You never, ever, ever give up on yourself. She says, Diane says, we can all do this. Just don't quit. Did you hear that? You can do this if you don't quit. That's all there is to it. It's just like, just like we go back to board in the airplane. If they lose your luggage, you don't turn around and fly home. If, they go, if you get to the wrong gate, you don't just give up on your entire journey. You go find the next gate, you board the plane, you take off to the destination, you get it done. Diane, way to be an amazing example as to how to get this done 
why to get it done, and what not giving up gives you. Truly, truly is my honor to celebrate this with you and walk this journey with you. I'm incredibly proud of you. Incredibly proud of you. Way to be the prize. To follow that up, Pamela writes in and says, Hey, I just want to drop a quick note to say thank you. As of today, I'm down 100.6 pounds and six pounds from goal. I will get there. Thanks for the support and the podcast. Pamela. Pamela, 100 pounds. You heard everything I just said to Diane. It's all true for you as well. Not quitting gives you amazing results. Pamela, keep up the great work. Pamela is on Connect as Pamela, G-O-L-L-O-B. I'll put that link in the show notes for you so you can follow both of them on Connect. Incredibly inspirational to see folks, you know, 100-pound loss, 149-pound loss. You can do it. You absolutely can do this. Next up, uh, it says, greetings, Fat Dag. Remember you? Remember me? I sent you in a knitted hat. I reached a huge personal milestone, and I couldn't wait to share with you and our community. I am 50 pounds down. Seeing it right there in print is staggering. That's a small bale of hay, five medium-sized bowling balls, five average house cats, two car tires, 10 chihuahuas. It's more than my son weighs. As soon as I realized that this wasn't something I could do to make other people in my life happy, and that this was something that I needed to do for myself, my health, my well-being, and my future, well, I was off and running. I have kept my eyes on my goals, my why close to my heart. I stayed in my own lane. I'm not worried about a timeline. And voila, steady and hard-earned success. I am a public figure. I have a show on PBS, and I teach all over the country. It's been thrilling to have students I had a while back again in class and, and have them not recognize me. I tell them what I'm doing, and I've gone from wishing to be the prize to actually becoming the prize. I tell them that no matter what their goal is, it's absolutely reachable. I happily shop in my closet, and I no longer hide behind baggy clothing and self-deprecation. I am proud of my journey, proud of my focus, and proud of my success. My children see me eating healthy and exercising and have picked up on this. As parents, we want so much for our children, and I'm taking the lead and walking my family down a path where healthy living is just how we do it. I'm not at goal yet, but, but mentally I'm there. My attitude has changed. I'm happier. I'm healthier. And for the first time in so very long, I'm proud of myself. I've learned to be kinder to myself, dust myself off when I stumble, get right back up without dwelling on the negative. Thank you for being one of the many tools I'm using to cross the goal line and become a resident of the land of lifetime. I'm looking forward to being there. I hear the water's warm. Weight Watchers unite. Tannis. Uh, from Connect, and her Connect name is Knit Mama Knit on Connect, which is cool. Uh, highest weight, 246. Uh, highest weight watcher, starting weight, 219. Current weight, 168.4. Goal, 144.6. What an amazing journey. So what a fun show this is tonight, having uh, having it now where, you know, 149-pound loss, 100-pound loss, 50-pound loss. Doesn't matter where you are on the journey, you can do this. Here we are, another example of, hey, I didn't quit. I learned to be kinder to myself, dust myself off. When I stumble, I get right back up. I don't dwell on the negative. I go to the airport terminal. I find whatever gate I'm supposed to get on. I get on the airplane. I just fly to whatever destination is in store for me. If they lose my luggage, so be it. That is how you get to goal. I I, I completely disagree, though, where you say that you're not at goal yet. But mentally, you're there. Eh, my attitudes change. You're happier. You're healthier. And for the first time you're in your life, you are proud of yourself. That's what goal is. I try so hard to let you know that I don't believe goal has anything to do with the scale. It truly doesn't. It doesn't matter how much you weigh. And I understand that's the only way that we can track this, right? That's the only data point that we can actually truly measure easily at home without going through all kinds of tests. So, so we use that as a guide. 
the true definition of goal, when you can write an email and say, I am proud of myself, that's goal. That's the part you celebrate. You're happier, you're healthier, you're inspiring your family. Your, your children are taking notice. Your students are taking notice. That's goal. It doesn't matter what the scale says at this point. If you continue in that mindset, you continue to be happy, healthy. You continue to make smart choices. Your body will react to that. Your body will continue to shed whatever weight is not needed because you're at goal currently. You know, I had this conversation with someone the other day is, you know, we talked about, you know, do, do I get a doctor's note for goal? Do, do, I, do I pick a number? You know, and you think about it for a second. Let's just say, let's say you started at, you know, I'm going to be over-exaggerating here just for the sake of math. Let's say you started it at 1,000 pounds and, and you lost weight and you got down to 400 pounds. That's goal. Your doctor would be so proud of you for doing all that stuff. You know, that is what, that's a hard work. It's not about the fact that you're not in a normal BMI chart. Now, clearly at that point, you'd want to continue working with your doc. But but what I'm trying to drive home here is your attitude has changed. You're happier. You're healthier. You're proud of yourself. Folks, I want you on this journey to take notes right now. Find a way to wake up every single morning proud of what you're doing. This is not easy work. It's absolutely worth it. It's absolutely doable. And so as you wake up and you, and you will have challenges and you'll have bumps along the way, but as you continue, just like Diane did, just like Pamela did, just like Tennis did, by not giving up, you will have the success you're after. It doesn't matter what else you got going on in your life. And, and so continue doing this. You made a great point early on in your email. You said that you realized that in order to do this, it had to be something that you were doing for you. You had to do it for your health, your well-being, your future. You couldn't do it to make other people in your life happy. That is so true. As you understand that this is your personal journey. Other people benefit from your success, but you have to want to do it for you. You've done that. That's why you're down 50 pounds, and that is an amazing accomplishment. Uh, I also am extremely proud of you. Thank you so much for writing in. And yeah, I'll never forget the hat. I actually truly do wear it uh, anytime it's cold. It's the only hat I wear now. So thank you for the hat. I'll I'll never forget it. It blows my mind every time I look at it, uh, the amount of detail of how you can, you know, knit words into a hat. It's absolutely cool. Maybe maybe we should start making some hats that say, you know, minus 50, minus 149, minus 100. How cool would that be? Uh, congratulations. Tom writes in and says, hey, Mike, uh, Fat Dag, I've been listening to Wise Advice nonstop for the past couple of weeks to make sure I stick to plan to get the year off to a good start. It really is a big help. We started this round of Weight Watcher journeys about the same time, January of 2016 for me. I followed you on Connect, and as we lost weight at the same time, though I started at 341 pounds and 53 years old because it took me this long for it to click. I feel as though I owe you an apology, as I called you out for basically over-marketing. But I was wrong, and clearly you are focused on helping others, so it's been on my mind and I'm sorry. So many topics in the podcast ring true to my journey. I just had my two-year anniversary, and I told my meeting the first year I perfected losing weight, dropping 156 pounds in 56 weeks, reaching goal and reaching lifetime. In year two, I learned what does not work in maintenance. As I put on about 30 of those original pounds while running three 5Ks, one duathlon, uh, two sprint distance adventure triathlons, guess what? No matter how much exercise you do, if you eat more calories than you burn, you'll gain. I've lost 12 pounds in January, and I'll be back to goal as my body is ready for it, as the scale is just an output of being on plan. I'm back to plan, attending my meeting every week, leveraging freestyle, making sure my calories, blue dots, 
plus zero point foods run less than my calories burned. My Garmin watch gives me my output. So thank you for the podcast. I listen every day, except for the days that I don't. And I believe that being on plan is non-negotiable. And the results will take care of themselves. Hashtag B-O-P-I-N, which basically means when you're out of points, stop eating points. Wishing you good focus, Tom. Uh, and Tom's on connected T-R-A-I-N-D-A. So Tom, uh, thank you for your email. Congratulations on Lifetime and getting to goal. What an amazing accomplishment that is. I'm glad we started at the same time, but but man, you killed it. 156 pounds in 56 weeks. Tell me that's not incredible. Tell me you aren't a completely new person. Now, I get that your year two was learning what did work and what didn't work in maintenance. And you know what? I am very, very, very proud of you for figuring out in the middle of that what your limit was. As you navigated maintenance, you figured out that that a 30-pound gain was it. You got back to the basics, you got back to the plan, and you are continuing to get it done. I think what's important in this journey is that, you know, for so many of us, as we as we start losing weight, you know, we 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 beg for that scale to go down 0.2, 0.4, one pound. And then as it creeps up, you know, back the other direction, we're afraid that we're going to go back to where we started. You have a limit in place. You figured it out. You got it done. The proof is you are a lifetime member. You know how this program works. You're right. Just just eat more calories, you know, than you burn more than, than, than you eat. You get it done. Whether you follow this plan, whether you follow your own plan, you know how to get it done. Clearly you've gotten it done and your exercise is helping, but you're right. You can't, you can't outrun a bad diet. Tom, I am absolutely, absolutely proud of you. And I'll tell you, you know, I appreciate your apology, but, but you absolutely don't owe me up an apology. And so what I, what I want to, I want to share with you is that, you know, when I decided, uh, I, I made a conscious decision somewhere not too long ago to say, you know, I'm going for this. I, I, I need the world to know that what we're trying to do is possible. And so, yes, I agree. At times, it comes across as over-marketing, and, and, and it's deliberate because I want the feeling that you have, and I want the feeling that I have. And, and you heard the email from Tannis, and you heard Pamela, and you heard Denise. That joy that untold joy is out there. It lives in every single one of us. And the only way we will ever know that it's possible is if somebody shares the joy for us. We see that joy, we see that excitement, and we want it. That's what got me to goal. That's what got you to goal. That's what, that's what gets hundreds of people to goal. So I, I, I get that it comes across as over-marketing, but I can tell you, you do not owe me an apology because just like you, I've walked this journey. I understand that the mental side of this journey controls us more often than not, and it doesn't matter in that sense. And, and so, so where you were at that journey, you're not there now, and, and you understand, you appreciate it, and I want you to do exactly what I'm doing, and that's tell the world. Tell the world this is doable. Tell the world this is the most amazing thing on the planet. Tell the world you lost 156 pounds and you're a different person. And then let them know that they can do it too. Because I know you believe it. I absolutely know that as you're out there telling people at 53 years old, starting at 341 pounds, you did it. You know, and I'm positive probably the first day you walked in, you didn't think it was possible, but, but through people telling you you could do it, you did it. When you're out of points, stop eating points. Tom, that's how it works. That's how you did it. Dude, I appreciate your email. I'm truly honored to walk this journey with you. It's a complete honor to celebrate with you. As we work the plan, as we continue to get it done, it's absolutely worth celebrating. And then as we celebrate, we just say, I did it. 
we encourage someone else to get it done. And at that point, we share it on the air and we say, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Let's go to fatdag.com. Click on listen now. Send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. You heard it earlier on in this, the emails here is, is those who wrote in tonight, very, very, very proud of everything they've done. And, and I venture to say that when they started the journey, the journey didn't start with pride. That pride becomes visible in the middle of the journey. It just kind of shows up. And the reason I want you to finally be proud of yourself is because when you continue to just start with small goals and, and, you, and you express a little bit of pride in what you've done, you start training that brain to look for more opportunities to be proud of what you're doing. The more you're proud of what you're doing, the more you want to persevere, the more you want to continue to get it done, the more you will not accept any single obstacle in your way as the final obstacle. Doesn't matter if your plane's delayed. Doesn't matter if you missed your flight. Doesn't matter if you're at the wrong gate. It doesn't matter if your connecting flight is on a completely different airline. You can get to your destination. It just takes a little bit of trust. It takes a little bit of you wanting to get it done. It takes focus on why you're getting it done, but you absolutely can get it done. And that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.